So in this video, we're going to take a look at calculating the area of one petal of a rose curve. And the rose curve that we're going to be interested in is the one defined by uh, the radius equals 5 cosine of 4 theta. So we have the equation here uh, in polar form. And we're going to go ahead and look at the graph of this rose petal in GeoGebra. <clears throat> so here's the rose petal that we're interested in and we want to know the area of one petal of the rose curve. So the, the, key to, the key thing to recognize here is that these petals are centered at the origin. So the key thing to do is to figure out first when is the radius equal to zero. That will tell you when your, locate, your location is at the origin. So we would start this process by one, re remembering what the equation is for uh, uh, for area between two radial lines. So when we're working with uh, polar coordinates, we know that the area is given by one half the angle from alpha to beta, where alpha is the location of the first radial line and beta is the location of the second radial line. And then it's r squared d theta. And remember, this was just a formula that came to us from trigonometry. One half the radius squared times the uh, angle as long as the angles measures in radians so we uh, need to be working in radians in this example and we want to recognize is that each rose uh, each petal on the rose curve starts at the origin and sweeps out and uh, until we get back to the origin so we want to take the radius which is 5 times the cosine of 4 theta and we want to determine when are our radii equal to when are our radii equal to 0 got to get I've got to get more proficient with this tool I'm used to working in uh, PowerPoint so for theta that was the radius uh, that was given to us on the, uh, this is the radius that was given to us on the PowerPoint so what we want to do is set this equal to zero and figure out when are we at zero each time and in particular we'd like to establish the radial line here and here we'd like to establish the location of those two radial lines because if we can sweep from this radial line to this radial line, if we make this alpha and this beta, then we'll get the area of this petal right here. And then we'll look at an alternate way to look at it um, as well. I like to, when I'm working with polar equations, I like to make my first step just kind of determining where I would be located if I were at an angle of zero. So remember in polar world, this is, the radial axis and so if I uh, plug zero uh, uh, zero radians in for theta which if we did that we would get uh, zero times four is zero cosine of zero is one one times five is five that would tell us that in the zero radian position we would be at a radius of five so in polar coordinates remember polar coordinates have the form radius and theta so this location right here would be the location radius is five, the angle is zero radians, zero rad. I always like to kind of figure out if, from starting at zero radians, where am I on the graph? Uh, then we need to take the radius and set it equal to zero to find out when we're at the pole or the origin. So the next step is going to be take this right here and figure out when am I at the origin? So we've got We've got five cosine of four theta establishing uh, our radius. And we want to know when is that equal to zero? When do we wind up at the pole as we rotate through our angle uh, theta? So solving this for zero, we divide both sides by five, which, will st which would just give us cosine of four theta equals zero. Then we would take the cosine inverse of both sides. So that would give us four theta equals and we get the cosine inverse of zero. So remember by the uh, even symmetry of the cosine function, we always get two answers that come out of this. We get plus or minus the angle that the cosine inverse of zero gives us. Um, and then we get infinitely many answers. So we can always add on the plus two pi k. And then we would need to multiply both sides here by a fourth. And that would be to isolate theta. The cosine inverse of zero is just pi over two. Pi over two is the angle at which the cosine is zero. So we would get theta equals, and this would be plus or minus pi over two 
plus two pi k times the one fourth, and then distributing that one fourth in, we would get theta equals plus or minus pi over eight plus uh, one fourth times the two is going to give us pi over two times k. So this right here is, is really enough to, to get things going. Uh, if we let k equal zero, we get angles at plus or minus pi over eight. So this angle right here to this radial line is actually negative pi over eight radians. And rotating up to this radial line, we get pi over eight radians. So if we plug in negative pi over eight or pi over eight, we'll get a radius of zero. Um, so we're actually rotating this direction around this rose petal. You plug in pi over two, you get four times pi over two is, well, sorry, pi over eight. Uh, we let k equals zero, we get plus or minus pi over eight. We plug pi over eight in here, we get pi over two. Cosine of pi over two is zero, zero times five is zero. So as you rotate through an angle of pi over two, your radii are actually slowly walking their way to zero. And at negative pi over eight, we would get, when we plug that in, we get cosine of negative pi over two, which is also zero. Zero times five is zero. So that rotation of negative pi over eight also puts us at the pole. So the area of this petal, we could calculate it. We could calculate it by saying, hey, we're gonna take the area, which is equal to a half, and then we could go from negative pi over eight radians to pi over eight radians, which sweeps us through this whole rose petal. <clears throat> and then it would be one half the radius squared, but the radius is given by 25 cosine of four theta, and this would be squared and it would be d theta. There is an alternative to this, which I actually prefer. I like to get the bounds to be zero if, if it's possible to do so. So one thing to notice is that when we're in the zero radian position, we're out here at the radius of five, we've already calculated that. So if we look at being in the zero radian position and then rotating through to that pi over eight position, so from zero to pi over eight, we actually get the area of the upper half of the petal. And by symmetry, we could just double that. So an alternative approach here would be to put the lower bound of integration at zero, indicating that at zero, we're in this radius five position and then rotate through to pi over eight. At pi over eight radians, we're at the origin. We're at radius is zero, angle is pi over eight and then we would double this integral. So we go two times a half is one. So we would just get double that integral. And the nice thing about doubling, so two times a half, doubling the integral, of course, is um, that we're gonna get a zero on this lower bound of integration, which makes the integration easier. So once we get the integral set up, it's just a matter of integrating it. And this will be the only example in this set of videos where I actually do the full integration. I'm gonna focus on just setting the integrals up because all of them are then calculable using techniques that you've already learned. So the area would equal, the 25 squared is, the two times a half is one, so that will go away. The 25 squared could be factored out front of the integral, so we'd have the integral from zero to pi over eight of the cosine squared of four theta d theta. And the trick here would be to using your, your trig techniques to say, hey, a power reduction formula is going to be the correct tool to use. So we know that the cosine squared of x is equal to one plus the cosine of double x, double the x divided by two. So in this case, uh, x is being played uh, by four theta. We're, we have a case where x equals four theta. So this integral could then be rewritten to 25 squared times the integral from zero to that pi over eight angle times, and this would be one plus the cosine of double x, but x is being played by four theta, so we would get cosine of eight theta in here 
and this would all be over 2, and this would be a d theta sitting there. And then the 1 half could factor out of the, of the integral because it's just a constant. So if we factor him out, I guess I'll just have to erase the whole thing. We'd be left with, we'd be left with just a one plus the cosine of the eight theta sitting inside of here. And then it's just a matter of integrating that, which isn't too difficult to do. I would have to bring the integration up higher on the board because I know there's face sitting down in here someplace might already be into it so we would get 25 squared over 2 times so when we integrate 1 d theta we just get theta when we integrate the cosine of 8 theta we would get 1 eighth times the co uh, times the sine sorry 1 eighth of the sine 1 eighth sine 8 theta and we would be evaluating this from 0 to pi over 8 so from 0 to pi over 8 and then it's just a matter of plugging things in and we recognize that the 0 is nice on the lower end the reason I wanted the 0 here is we plug 0 in for theta we get 0 we plug 0 into 8 times theta we get the sine of 0 which is 0 so we don't have to worry about this lower limit by using the symmetry to double that rose petal and getting that 0 in this down position so here we would just get 25 squared over 2 times pi over 8 would plug in here pi over 8 plus 1 8 times the sine of we plug pi over 8 in here we get 8 times pi over 8 is pi but the sine of pi is zero, so we just get uh, 25 squared over 16 times pi as the area of a single petal.